ashamed. I have to hide myself. The Bible says that they then decided, well, I'm going to go sow fig leaves together. Now, can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine fig leaves? Fig leaves being the design of dress that they decided to wear on that day. Now, here comes God walking because, like I said, he walked with them and he talked with them. He fellowshiped with them on a regular basis. So the Bible says that when he was coming in the cool of the day, boy, Adam, where are you? Like he didn't know. But I believe he wanted him to understand and see, you've done something that you didn't have no business to do. Adam, where are you? Oh, well, Lord, here I am. I was naked. I was afraid, so I hid myself. They weren't afraid before. What do they have to be afraid for? You understand? Sin will make you be afraid. Sin will close the door. Sin is the only thing that separates us from God. Nothing is love, oh, by no means. But sin separates us from God. When Christ died and he said, well, why have you forsaken me? No, God hadn't forsaken his son. But the, the, the depth of sin, oh, it had it has cut a separation between Christ and the Father. Sin is the only thing that separates. But why? Why? It's ugly. There's nothing pretty about sin. It's dirty. There's nothing clean about sin. That's why we have to hide ourselves. That's why we have to feel ashamed. That's why there's guilt. They never felt those feelings before, and they didn't like them. Oh, all of a sudden, I got to go over here and sow some fig leaves. Can you picture Sister Abby and fig leaves? <laughs> Come on now. Amen. Got to sow fig leaves. But God had a plan. Hmm. When you said that this morning, Brother Tyrell was all in. God had a plan. He had a plan from the beginning. The Bible says in Hebrews, I believe that it is, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. That's the word. So when he realized, well, he knew what they had done, but when he held the head down to realize, now do you know what you've done? Mm. Now do you understand what you have done? It was a simple test. Mm. And the question was asked, you know, how much worse was that, that sin, them stepping into sin? They were in a perfect garden. They were in a perfect world. There was no sin. There was no ugliness. There was no nothing. And even the good stuff that we have now, the pretty roses and the flowers, the mowing the lawn, the, the lawn was green and perfect to eat. The roses was beautiful. Now there's thorns and thistles, and if you touch them wrong, you're going to hurt yourself. But see, that is the price of sin. That is the price that you pay. That one bite was all that it took. But he said, you have every tree. You have everything. The seed bearing fruit and the nuts and the grains and all of the trees. Just don't touch this one. Don't eat this one. And you'll be all right. It was too much. <laughs> too much. And all it took was for the enemy to come. Oh, you'll be like God. And you'll know good from evil. Painted a beautiful picture. Made it look really pretty. Because why would he say, you're going to look dirty now. You're going to feel bad now. Why would he do that? He would never do that. He never wants to paint sin out to be right what it really is, right? Amen. So he dressed it up real pretty. And we know the rest of the story. After Christ called out to them, well, I'm naked and I'm, I'm afraid. The Bible says that God made skins for our, our clothes from them from skin, animal skin. Well, he didn't make clothes from animal skins without doing what to them? He had to kill them. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, you understand what I'm saying? In the beginning, he had a plan. There was a plan of salvation in place. And he already knew what had to take place if in fact his children his innocent children. I have my children. I remember when they were young, they would love to run around naked. Love to. My grandchildren right now, Aiden, the, the baby, you got it. He cries when you take his clothes off. Cries when you put them back on. 
Just leave me be. Just let me be what I am. You know what I mean? That's the way children are. They don't know the difference between right and wrong, which was how Adam and Eve was. They didn't know right and wrong. They only knew right. They only knew that one way. Goodness, happiness, joy, cleanness. There was no guilt or shame. And the more I studied it, I, I was relating it to life today. I was relating it to, like I said, the royal wedding. But the Bible says that there, when we come to Christ, he washes us and cleanses us. Yes. In what? The blood of Jesus, because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. He washes us in that blood, and we can put on robes of righteousness. When God looks at us, he sees us. He sees us as Adam and Eve looked, in that robe of righteousness, in purity, in cleanness, because once we've been forgiven, the Bible says as far as the east is from the west, that's how far he removes our sin from us. Amen? Amen. 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 That's how he sees us. Oh, and I don't know about you, but I want to be clothed in that robe of righteousness. I want to have that robe. I want God to be my designer. I don't want Sister Edna to have on some dress that she has on, because I can guarantee you it's going to be some dirt somewhere. And you can use Tide and Clorox and all that kind of stuff. You still gonna be dirty, why? Because the only thing that will clean the dirt away yes, is the blood of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. I was thinking about the uh, the robe of righteousness and thinking about the skins that God made for them. How He had to kill an animal mm. from the beginning. God didn't want no killing, no type of killing. Then what happened? Cain killed Abel. Then there was a, I was listening to the Bible experience. I shared one time before that I purchased the Bible experience and I was listening to it in the car. And my granddaughter said, Dad, my mom, why is there so much killing? She don't understand because she's so young. Yeah. But see, that's what God said. The day that you eat thereof, you will surely die. And it brought death and destruction yeah. to a perfect place, yeah. a perfect world. Oh, people of God, this message is short today because, like I said, my leg is hurting. But I want to be clothed in that robe of righteousness. I want to be washed completely with the blood of Jesus. I need to be cleansed from my head to my feet. I need that robe of righteousness wrapped around me. So when my heavenly father looks at me, oh, God, when he looks at me, he can say, well done. He can say, oh, no, my daughter is forgiven. She is clean. She is washed from all sin and transgression. Amen. Amen. People of God, I just, I don't know about you, but that is my ultimate goal on today. That is my ultimate goal on today. To be wrapped up in his righteousness. I'm tired of sin. I'm tired of sin. I'm tired of death. I'm tired. I was listening to the news the other day. So many people are dying in the tornadoes and the hurricanes and the flooding. I'm tired of that, people of God. I need God's righteousness to cleanse me. I need his blood to cover me and to clean me up and make me prepared so that when Christ is seen coming in the clouds of glory, I can hear him say, well done. I will be raised up with those that are dead. I want to go home and meet the Lord in the air. How about you? How about you? If that is your desire on today, I want you to stand on today. If you want to be clothed in that robe of righteousness, to be washed clean from the, with the blood of Jesus, stand to your feet. And let's just pray on today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, here we stand, Lord. We stand here, Lord God, dirty, Lord God, and ashamed, dear Heavenly Father. But we know, Lord God, you told us in your word, Father God, that without the shedding of the blood, Lord God, that blood that Jesus shed on Calvary's cross for us, oh God, ooh, without that blood, oh God, we will remain dirty, oh God. 
But here we stand. We stand there, Heavenly Father, saying we want to be cleaned up today. We're tired of the things that we're doing, Lord God. We're tired of the way our life is going, oh God. We want to meet you in peace when you send your son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, God. Oh God, we love you and we adore you, oh God. We need you, Lord God. We need to be clean, dear Heavenly Father. Dip us down in the blood, dear Heavenly Father. Wash us and make us clean, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you that we that you made provision for us, oh God. Oh God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that not only are you an on-time God, Lord God, but you are a proactive God, that you already had a way of escape for us, God. Hallelujah, God. Oh God, bless us and keep us, God. Bless us and keep us in the blood, Lord God. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to order our steps in your word, oh God. Help us, Lord God, to live for you and serve you, Lord God. As Brother Tyrell said, you can't be in and out. It's one way or the other, oh God. Oh God, help us to choose life and not death on today, oh God. It's my prayer, oh God, in Jesus' precious name. His amazing, awesome name. His mighty name, oh God, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.